got a few laughs, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thanks. He is, it's a picture of him. What do you got? MBA, MBA, yeah, I love it. Thank you very much. Okay, no worries. In the future, I don't know. Lots of people have Kindles, don't they? The electronic books. But I think a real book is really good. And this is not a sales pitch, but I would say, buy, buy, buy. <laughs> and there is one person who I have to thank, which is going to hate me, but Leslie, my fiance, without her I would not be here, because, frankly, I'd be a gibbering wreck on the floor. <laughs> she keeps such good care of me that I really don't deserve so. Thank you very much, Thank you very much indeed. Looking forward to being your husband. <laughs> they did something utterly revolutionary. They elected a female mayor. <laughs> Actually, the greatest tragedy, the most shocking story that I ever had to read, happened in October of the very first year that I was reading, 1955. The owner of the immensely successful Dartmouth Pottery, a man called Howard Coppenhagen, took a shotgun and shot his wife, her 12-year-old daughter, family dog, and then turned the gun on himself. The 60s in Dartmouth were full of an absolute shed load of drama. Some of it very shocking. The nurse, the matron at Dartmouth Cottage Hospital, who got her accelerator and brake mixed up, drove straight off the embankment, couldn't get her door open or undo her seatbelt, and drowned in three metres of water, despite desperate attempts to find her. The Aneedan Line was a phenomenon. It was watched regularly by more than 10 million people. It was something that the people of Dartmouth took to their hearts. They're incredibly proud to have one of the most prestigious TV programmes there was filmed right here in Dartmouth. And just laid tarmac. No preparation, no flattening, no nothing. They raised the level of the road by up to a foot in some places. It would have been fine had they non, not done the tarmacking right up to the doors of all the garages that the houses had. <laughs> Most of which opened outwards, and some of which still had cars inside. <laughs> and the best thing was the Borough Council's excuse for this behaviour. Apparently, the garages were built in the wrong place. <laughs> the M5 had just been completed all the way down to Exeter. But it did inspire one correspondent for the Chronicle to sound a dire warning that a type of person would flood, and I'm, I'm quoting here, into Dartmouth and totally ruin it. And the words you're about to see are the actual banner headline on page three of One Week of the Chronicle. <laughs> These are the Dartmouth Happy Family Cards. And it was formed when Elizabeth Cooper realised that Dartmouth had a bank manager called Swindle, a, a ferry operator called Cruz, a butcher called Cutmore, an artist called Drew, a chemist called Killer. <laughs> In fact, there were two chemists. There was one called Killer and one called Measures. And the best one of all, the bookie was called Blew It. <laughs> Genius. The new embankment. It was a massive project. It cost millions. It required all of the local councils and South West Water to work together over a long period of a number of years. It was welcomed with open arms by everyone in the paper. It was just universally welcomed until they started work. And then the Chamber of Trade complained that the workmen were taking up too many parking spaces. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. I do hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoy reading the book. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming down. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm going to pitch one of you. And I um, hope you enjoyed the book. Thank you so much.